Hi, welcome to September's first uh, grade three to 12 craft. We are going to be making paper flowers. Um, what you need on hand is a pair of scissors. They don't really have to be that big, but that's my pair of scissors. Some glue. Now, if you have a glue gun and are allowed to use it, that will make this go much faster. But any kind of white glue, like tacky glue or Elmer's glue will also work. I wouldn't use a glue stick because the glue isn't strong enough for this. Um, the paper we gave you in the bag and also the templates we gave you in the bag. They should be um, cut out of cardboard. There'll be four of them, but I'm going to show you the flowers one at a time. So the first thing, one we're going to do is the one with the pointy petals. So get both of those out. Now, I've already cut mine out, but I want to show you a trick I use. So instead of using a regular pencil, what I use is a colored pencil that's slightly darker than the paper. Let's see, let's line it up at the bottom so we don't have to cut one line. And then I'll do my tracing. And now, it's probably kind of hard to see on camera, but I have an outline. Yeah, it's probably hard to see on camera. But one of the things that about this is when I cut it out, if I'm a little off, you don't see those pencil lines. You just have to have it dark enough to show up um, on your paper. Okay, so you are going to need six of the small petals and six of the large petals. I will say if you don't want to cut out all that much, you can do um, six of one of them. You're going to get a bigger flower with the larger one and a smaller flower with the smaller one. I'm going to show you the double layered. And if you decide you don't want to cut out 12 petals, then you can um, do six and make it one layer. And I'll show you how to finish that off while we go along. Okay. So, one of the things that we need to do to make this a real 3D project is to make the paper have a shape. And the way we do that is we cut a little slit. I'd say this is about an inch, inch and a half at the bottom. And I'm starting with the big ones. Put a, oops, this is a new bottle. Cut that off. There we go. Put some glue there, only on one side of the cut, and then take the side without the glue and fold it over onto the side with the glue. Now, with white glue, you're gonna have to sit here and hold it for a second. Um, if you're using a glue gun, you can do that um, Sorry, if you're using glue gun, you won't have to hold it f for more than just one second it takes to get them together, which is why a glue gun is nice, but they are very hot and hard to work with. So make sure you have permission to use one before you use it. All right, so that's not fully dry, but I think it's dry enough to stay together while we work on the other ones. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut about an inch, put the glue on, fold it over. Now you are not gonna wanna sit here while I do all these, so we are going to fast forward the video now. There'll be a little music, just enjoy it.
Okay, so now we have six curved large petals. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Now, you're going to need to have something to glue them onto. So take a piece of scrap paper of the same color and just cut out a circle. I say a circle, no one's going to see it. So it can be an ugly circle. Don't worry about how it looks because you're going to cover it up. And now, I would suggest you let these dry a bit more than I have if you want to um, go on to working on your next flower, cutting those pieces out. You're going to need um, six large and six small of the other templates too. So you can start doing that so you're ready while these dry a little bit. But once they are dry, you're going to put some glue on the bottom and then glue that to that circle we just made. And we're gonna go around. Now, actually, I probably made this circle too small. Yeah, I'm only gonna be able to fit four. So, that's my mistake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a larger circle. And again, some of the world's ugliest circle making, but it doesn't matter. So I would say this is, oh, it's hard to say, five or six inches across. I don't have a ruler on me. Sorry for doing this, but I thought that the circle might be a little too big this time. So I cut it down a little. You'll be able to see what it's going to look like. Once you get three on, you know that you're going to need the same amount of space for the rest of it that you did the other three. So once you put three on, take a look and figure out if your circle is too big, you can just cut it right there like I did. Yeah. Okay. And don't worry about the glue. It's going to dry clear. So these little white bits you see are not going to stick around. Okay. So, we've got them glued down. And now you can make decisions on the shape of your flower. You can leave it like this. This is a nice shape. Um, oh, sorry, bumped the camera. But I'm going to show you another option. It's best to do this without, uh, with a pencil without ridges. This has ridges, so it's not the best one to do it with. But we're going to curl the petals with a pen or a pencil. So get something that's smooth all the way across that doesn't have sides. Like this is kind of a, not an octagon, a hexagon. And we're gonna put the top of the petal over, and then you're gonna roll that in order to curl your paper. Also, I will say, you don't, you can curl it the other way too. You can curl it in like this. So it's up to you which shape you like, but you do want to have them all go the same way. And the further down you go, the more of a curl you're going to get.
Okay. Now, here's your flower. If you don't want to do the second layer of petals, what you can do is take your piece of yellow, and I'm not gonna be careful with this, but you should be if you're finishing this up. I'm gonna make another careless circle, but you should make a nice circle for the center. Maybe find a, um, a glass and trace around that and cut it out so you have a nice even circle. But you could always plop something in the middle of there and you're done. But for everybody else, I'm going to show you how to put the rest of them in. Now, we're not going to do the slit that we did before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it a little bit. Uh, maybe half to three quarters of an inch. The bottom. I am going to roll it before I glue it. And glue it down. And I'm going to do that six times. It's actually going to go pretty fast, so I don't think I'm going to fast forward this bit. Although this video is going to be long since we're doing two flowers. So if you want to, after we do the first flower, pause do something else for a while and then come back to this, you can. Now, six of these petals is, might be a little big. It all depends on the size of your circle. So a lot depends on the size of the circle you almost, you made, not almost. I'll, I'll probably get five in there. And that's all right. It's better to have too many than too few. Yep, I can only fit five. That is okay. This last one might be a little tricky to get in there, but don't worry about folding the paper back. It's stiff paper, so it'll easily go back to its shape. All right, so the petals of the flower are done. All we're gonna do is make a center. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. We're gonna do both with yellow. Although if you want to do yours with pink, you can. Just make sure you do it after you cut the petals of the second flower out. Uh, that way you can be sure you have enough. All right, so the first way is kind of what I showed you before. Cut out a circle and glue it down at the bottom. There is another way, if you're very patient and good with a pair of scissors, and honestly, this one you probably need a glue gun for or you're gonna be sitting there holding it for ages. So what I did was I took a strip of paper. This is probably about three inches, folded it in half, and then I started to cut, make a fringe. But you may have to make sure to cut on the folded edge, not the open edge. And so, and then you do even, I mean, sort of even. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. You're, but you wanna make them all the same size, just go down. And this does require a lot of patience. I like to do these kind of things while I'm watching TV, so it doesn't seem so time consuming. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that. All right, and so the reason I say you probably need a glue gun for this, I'm gonna try it with a regular glue, is now what you're gonna do, you're gonna leave it folded in half and you're gonna roll it. Every so often, put a dab of glue and keep rolling. 
dab the glue, roll. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Dab the glue and roll. And okay, so you're going to want to definitely put a final bit of glue in between the two layers and between the first layer, wipe off the excess. And you, if you're using regular glue, you're going to have to hold this for a while. If you're not using regular glue, if you're using the glue gun, this will be ready to go. So what you're going to do is you're going to put glue along the bottom of this and place it inside your flower. But if it's tight, what you can do is you can kind of just loosen it up by pulling on the different pieces. I'm going to try this. Put glue down. I just have a feeling it's going to unravel itself. And there you go. That is the first flower. You have a couple of different options. And now we are going to move on to the next one. Okay, let's start on flower number two. Uh, I learned my lesson from the last video. I have all the petals ready except for one, which I'm going to use as a demonstration. Just like the first one, you're going to want a cut. You're going to want to cut a circle that's your base. That might have been too small again, but just let's just see what happens. This one is kind of um, a rose, so we don't want it to be as cupped as the last one. We want it to be more flat. So instead of cutting and gluing, I just fold the bottom a little bit. So let me just show you what you do. And you do the same thing for the big petals as the small petals. So I'm just going to show you one time. For this one, I used a pen that's a bit thicker than the colored pencil I used to curl last time. The, uh, the bigger the thing you curl it around, the more, I don't, I don't know what exactly to call it, but gentle. This is more of a gentle curve than the other one, which was a kind of an aggressive curl. So you can experiment with which one you like better, but um, I'm, I'm going to use the big one for this. So you're going to curl it two times instead of just one time. So you're going to want to position whatever you're curling it around diagonally with one of the bumps at the top and you're going to curl that backwards like that and then go to the other side and do the same thing now if you curled it the wrong way don't worry about it just flip it over and it'll be the right way now we're going to have a little bit of a fold at the bottom it's about half an inch quarter of an inch, half an inch, just so we have something to glue down. And it stands up a little bit, just not as much as the last one. Okay, so we are going to do the big ones first. I have six big ones, just like the last time. And with this one, uh, feel free to overlap them. Roses overlap a lot, just naturally. So if you overlap you're just going to make it look more like the flower it is i'm kind of going off the middle circle but that's all right just make sure you have something down so you don't get glue on whatever table you're working on like i am Looks like we're going to be only able to fit one more. Again, that's okay. So this is five of the larger petals. 
But if I made a bigger circle, I could do all six. Oops. Okay. Learn my lesson. No picking it up until it's dry. Okay. You hear that? Don't pick it up until it's dry. <laughs> and don't do what I did and get glue on the table. Hopefully I won't glue the flower to the table. All right. So now we move on to our small ones. We're going to do the same thing. The one thing you want to make sure to do is when you glue it down, the small ones, make sure you get them in between the two large ones. So you see how there's kind of a V that the two large ones make. You want to put the smaller petal right in between them. So again, I want to cover this gap. So I glue it here. And again, and just like the other one, I fit five on here, but the best thing to do is to make two more small ones than you did with the larger ones, and I'll show you why. So for a, the center of a rose, it's got a kind of a coil, right? So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the small ones and we're gonna kind of roll it into a tube. And you see how that kind of looks like <clears throat> the center bit of a flower? And you can actually do this as many times as you want. You don't need to have two. You could actually do it a bunch of times. This is just to make the inside look more like a rose. If you don't like this look, you can always do what we did with the last one and um, <clears throat> make a circular or fringe center or just make up your own. Actually, what I should have is a third one here. Ah, I do have another one. And I'm gonna roll this one really tight. The smaller the roll you end up being, the more curled it's gonna be. So I'm rolling this one really tight, which is mean this is. I'm gonna leave it curled like that, bend the bottom over, and glue this down. Right in the center. This one you're gonna have to hold down a little bit. All right, and that's all you have to do. This is your rose and your second flower. If you want to add leaves, uh, you can definitely do that. What I would do is take the smaller one of the pointed petal. Sorry, I'm looking for it right now. I don't know where I put it. I'll just show you a different one. So the smaller pointed petal, you can put that on green paper, trace it, cut it out, and you have a leaf. You could also draw it yourself or just freehand it. And then you're gonna wanna glue it underneath. I'm not lifting this up yet because it's not all dry, but you can see what it'll look like afterwards. We would love to see your creations you can um, post them on Instagram or Facebook and tag the Lodi Memorial Library so we can see them. Or if you come into the library and you have pictures on your phone, we'd love to see them there as well. Okay, so that is the end of project number one in September's grades three to 12 crafts. I hope you had fun. I'll see you for the watercolor panda. Bye.